All right, boys and girls, you know, I want to do a little video on works. I've done a video on works before, but uh, I think I missed a few points. The reason I'm redoing it is because I'm hearing people that I know and that I don't know. You don't need works. You don't need works. You don't need works. Works has nothing to do with it. You know, you're saved by faith. Works has, you know, you're, you're preaching a bad, you're preaching a very dangerous message, guys. You got to, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you something. You can't take one scripture like you're saved by faith and not by works. Okay, that's true. You are saved by grace, by faith. It's an instant gift from God, just like the guy on the cross. Okay, he looked over at Jesus and boom, that was it, man. He believed, he's done. The guy only had three minutes to live. He barely squeaked in. Okay, but now... There's different levels, ladies and gentlemen. You got to read the whole Bible. You got to put the whole puzzle together to figure that out. Okay, there's different levels. If God allows you to be a person like me and live 50 years after knowing God, okay, you're expected to grow. You're expected to produce fruit, just like the parables talk about. You're on God's vine. You're expected to produce fruit or you'll be cut off. Okay, if you're a seed and you do not grow or you do start growing because you heard the word and you accepted it with, with gladness and joy, and then all of a sudden you go back to being lukewarm and you go back into the world. What's, what's Revelations talk about, lukewarm? You're going to get cut off. Okay, lukewarm, ladies and gentlemen, is somebody that believes in God halfway. They know God, they follow God, but they're going back into the world. Okay, that's lukewarm. What does Revelation say? Boom, you're going to get cut off. You're going to get thrown into the fire, okay, guys, because you have no works. Now let me get into works, okay? Uh, Jesus told John, seven churches, okay? These are, these are churches that believed in God. They were saved. Jesus was warning them sternly, I know your works, and you are lacking. You have fallen away from God. You have fallen away from your first love. You're falling back into the world. You're going lukewarm. You're climbing over the other side of Satan's fence again. And if you do not repent, and if you do not get back on the other side of the fence with God, I'm going to take away your lampstands and you're going to be in deep trouble. You don't want me taking away your lampstands. Jesus was telling John to go warn those churches. So anybody who believes in once saved, always saved, you know, you're a fool. Because that, that scripture right there shows that's not true. Uh, also shows that you need works to get on the right side of the fence with God. If you are not doing works, you're in big trouble. The only way to get on the other side of the fence with God is to pick up your cross daily like Jesus said, and follow me. So if you pick up your cross daily and follow God, those are works. If you're sitting in your chair watching TV all day, that is not picking up your cross daily and following God, following Jesus, the Son of God, okay? You have no works, you're in big trouble. Now let's get into a few scriptures here and I'm going to show you. Okay, again, you got to read the whole book, guys. You can't just pick and choose one scripture and then not read the whole book. Okay, so here we go. Matthew 7.21. Jesus said that those who do the will of my Father, that many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord. Okay, but only those who are doing the will of my Father will, and will enter in the door. Okay, so what did Jesus just say right there? You got to work towards the Father. Okay, only those that are doing the will of my Father. That involves work, ladies and gentlemen. So he's basically saying, guess what? If you're not working and you're not doing the will of my Father, you're not going to make it. Okay, only a few are going to make it in on that scripture is what he's talking about. So tell me, ladies and gentlemen, are works necessary in that scripture? Absolutely. Okay, let's let's stop there. Let's go to the next one. Okay, Luke 13, 24. Make every effort to enter in through the narrow door. Okay, did you read that? Make every effort to enter in through the narrow door because many will try and they're not going to make it. So 
explain to me, ladies and gentlemen, how do you make an effort to make your efforts to get in through the door? You got to work. Okay. Again, let's not take that scripture where it says, do not boast that your works will save you. Okay. That's not what that means, guys. It's just telling you that you can't go preaching to people that, well, if you want to get to heaven, you got to work. Okay. You do have to work, but that's not what gets you into heaven. The gift of God is by grace because you're a sinner and otherwise you wouldn't make it in to begin with. So you got, you got to read it the right way, guys. You know, it's by grace you're saved, but if you don't do works to prove your worth afterward, you know, you're in big trouble. Depends on what level you're on. If you're the guy on the cross, once again, you don't have time for works. You know, you got in by the skin of your teeth. Again, guy like me, I've had 50 years to live. I have to prove and I have to grow on the vine and produce fruit. Now let's keep going. Matthew 5, 16, let your, let your light shine before men so that they may see your good works and glorify God who is in heaven. Okay, so basically, what's, what's, that, what's that scripture saying? You got to work so that men will see what you're doing. If you're sitting in your house and you're not doing nothing, once again, watching TV, nobody's seeing what you're doing. You got to show your works before men. Okay, well, let's go here. Do not, this is James uh, 122. Do not merely listen to the word, but be doers of the word, because if you don't, you're deceiving yourself. Okay, that's exactly what the scripture says. Do not merely be, do not merely listen to the word. So in other words, he's saying you're saved. Okay, because you are listening to the word. Okay, but if you do not do, if you're not a doer of the word, then you are deceived and you're going to hell. This is exactly what the scripture is saying. If you are not a doer, which is works, okay, you are deceived and you're going the wrong way. You're on Satan's side of the fence. You guys understand that. That's exactly what that scripture is saying. Now, let's go to this one. Revelation 3, 3. Remember, therefore, what you received and heard. Okay, so now he, this is Jesus or John talking to these people. Remember what you receive. What did you receive? The gift of God. What did you hear? The word of God. Okay, and it says, hold on to it fast and repent. Because if you do not repent, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to come like a thief and you're going to be in trouble. This scripture right here literally shows, okay, hold on to it fast and repent. How do you repent? You got to have works. Okay, guys, that's that involves works. You know, this is literally saying that you receive the gift. You heard the word, but if you do not repent, why why would that why would the scripture be talking about you repenting? Because you're going lukewarm. You know, what is what does the revelations talk about? Lukewarm? That means that somebody knows God, but they're going lukewarm. They got one foot on Satan's side of the fence, they got one foot on God's side of the fence, and that's how they're living their life. They're lukewarm. That scripture says that you know what? You're going to hell. Okay, because you're either for God, you're either on that side of the fence and way out in the pasture on his side, or you're halfway on Satan's side and you're in big trouble. So make up your mind. You can't be lukewarm. You got to get running towards God. You got to run towards God. You got to seek God. You got to worship God. You got to do all that stuff. Those all involve works. And if you don't have works, you're in big trouble. Now, let me, let me, let me, I'm just going to. Finish this off with this one. But speaking, you know, something just popped in my mind. And speaking of Christians and their works, okay? I was watching a documentary documentary the other day. This uh, Jody Arias, she's in prison for life for killing her husband. You guys probably heard of her. Uh, I was watching the documentary on the whole thing and how she met this guy and what happened and blah, blah, blah. This guy was supposedly religious. Okay, but he met her in a bar or he took her to a bar, got her drunk. That's where they met or whatever. And then took her home and had sex with her. And that's how it all started. But, you know, when he was in the bar in the in the, during the movie, he was preaching to her, you know, about gospel music and taking her to taking her to church. And I'm thinking, there you go. You know, these are Christians that call themselves Christians, you know. I'm a Christian, I'm a Catholic, I'm this, I'm that, but yet here, they, here he is in a bar picking up women, 
taking him home, having sex, and he considers himself to be a Christian. This is how deceived these people are with their works and how they're living their lives. Okay, now that's totally lukewarm. He's he's not even that's not even lukewarm. He's he's evil, you know, totally. Anyway, let's get on this and I'm done. James 2 14. Check this out. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but yet does not have works? Can faith save him with a big question mark? Now, let me repeat that. What does it profit anybody if they say they have faith, but they have no works? Faith without works is dead. So if your faith is dead, according to this scripture, you're in big trouble. Okay. And then it also goes on to say, can faith alone save him? Jeez, guys. How can you take this scripture and not read it any other way? He's literally saying that your faith alone cannot save you. It can if you're the guy hanging on the cross next to Jesus. But again, if you read further on into the Bible where you're required to grow, like me, you know, and you're not growing and you're lukewarm and you're part of the seven churches and you need to repent, okay? So he's basically saying right here that faith alone will not save you, man. If you don't have works, you're in big trouble. Okay, I'm going to read a little bit more of that, and then I'm done. Talking about thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. That's what he says. Some will say, some of, someone will say, if you have faith and I have works, show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith with my works. Blah, blah, blah. Hold on now. I'm, I'm stuttering here. Was not Abraham justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son, on the altar? Okay, so now, now he's saying here that Abraham was justified. His faith was justified when he offered his son on the altar. Okay, you guys understand that? Before that time, his faith was not justified. Okay, wasn't justified until he offered his son upon the altar. And then he goes on down at the bottom and says the same thing with Rahab, the harlot, who was also justified by her works. Okay, when she received messengers and sent them out another way, whatever, whatever, whatever. So in other words, he's also saying that Rahab had the works to justify her faith. Okay, you guys, you see in the picture. So there's a myriad of of scriptures that prove that you got to have works. But again, you know, after a certain amount of time, it depends on what level you're at with God. Okay, we all start out as a seed. We all start out as a babe, as the Bible describes. And if you have the opportunity and God gives you the, the whatever, the privilege to grow old, during that time, you have got to show your works. You have got to, your works are going to justify your faith. So you will be judged by your works. That's even in Revelations. You'll be judged by your works. You know, if I'm not mistaken, somebody proved me wrong on that. It says in Revelations, you will be judged by your works. Okay? Mark my words. Works matters. And for all you out there, you know, if Satan was a preacher of a church, a pastor, he would be preaching that works doesn't matter. No, don't worry about works. You know, you ain't got to worry about none of that. You know, just go on home, sit in your lazy boy, watch the big black Satan box, and you're all good to go. You know, once saved, always saved. Once saved, always saved. You believe in God, that's who, that's good, that's it. No works, no nothing. Just go on home, watch TV, drink some beers, go to the bars, you know, be like Jody Harris's boyfriend, you know, pick up some women, go take them home, have sex. You know, you're saved, you're saved. You're good to go. That's exactly what that guy was. He went to a church that told him once saved, always saved. So it was okay to go to a bar and pick up women and take them home and have sex. Dude, he's saved. That's what he was taught, you know, by these satanic churches all over America. 99% of them are teaching the same thing. All right, man, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, good enough, guys. Peace out. Take care. God bless. Have a great day.